Welcome to One Passage. You're listening to a study of Paul's letter to the Galatians called Set Free by Christ Alone. In this episode, we're looking at chapter 3, verses 1 to 14. In this passage, Paul continues to plead with the Galatians to stop turning away from the gospel and instead come back to his God-given message of faith alone and Christ alone. And the way Paul seeks to do that is by answering the question that we have titled this episode, What Makes Faith So Important? For this passage, we have three key reading tools that will help us rightly read and understand the passage. First, there are several words that are repeated throughout the passage, so look to see what those are and where Paul uses them. Second, Paul mentions Abraham, one of the most famous Old Testament characters from the book of Genesis. So why does Paul bring Abraham up, and what does he have to do with us today? Finally, Paul gives a summary statement for the whole passage in verses 13 and 14. Notice what the ideas are that he mentions and how they relate to one another. So we'd encourage you to get your Bibles out and put your eyes on God's Word as we hear it read out for us now. Galatians 3, starting in verse 1. O foolish Galatians, who has bewitched you? It was before your eyes that Jesus Christ was publicly portrayed as crucified. Let me ask you only this. Did you receive the Spirit by works of the law or by hearing with faith? Are you so foolish? Having begun by the Spirit, are you now being perfected by the flesh? Did you suffer so many things in vain, if indeed it was in vain? Does he who supplies the Spirit to you and works miracles among you do so by works of the law or by hearing with faith, just as Abraham believed God and it was counted to him as righteousness? Know then that it is those of faith who are the sons of Abraham. And the scripture, foreseeing that God would justify the Gentiles by faith, preached the gospel beforehand to Abraham, saying, In you shall all the nations be blessed. So then, those who are of faith are blessed along with Abraham, the man of faith. For all who rely on works of the law are under a curse. For it is written, Cursed be everyone who does not abide by all things written in the book of the law and do them. Now it is evident that no one is justified before God by the law, for the righteous shall live by faith. But the law is not of faith. Rather, the one who does them shall live by them. Christ redeemed us from the curse of the law by becoming a curse for us. For it is written, Cursed is everyone who is hanged on a tree, so that in Christ Jesus the blessing of Abraham might come to the Gentiles, so that we might receive the promised Spirit through faith. Faith is one of those words that can sound very religious and spiritual, but if it's not defined well, it can often seem vague and confusing. What is faith according to the Bible, and why is it so central when it comes to the way in which God saves sinners? Well, Paul shows how important faith is in the summary statement of this whole passage in verses 13 and 14. In those verses, Paul mentions three things that happen to all Christians— And he ends by using two words that explain how those things actually take place. He says it is through faith. It's important to remember that others had come into Galatia after Paul and wanted to get the Galatians to add works to their faith in order to really be accepted by God. So Paul is writing here once again to call us back to God's amazing grace and the message of faith alone in Christ alone. Like we just mentioned, faith is so important, and this passage gives us three reasons why. In verses 1 to 5, Paul uses the experience of these Christians in Galatia to argue that they received the Holy Spirit by faith, not by works. Then in verses 6 to 9, he takes them back into the Old Testament to show that salvation by faith has always been God's plan. We enter into the family of God by faith, not by works. And then finally, in verses 10 to 14, Paul shows us that salvation is by faith because everyone who relies on the works of the law will remain under the curse of the law. So in verses 1 to 5, Paul says that the first reason why faith is so important is because God's Spirit is received through faith. In verses 1 and 3, Paul starts with a similar rebuke he had given at the beginning of this letter by referring to the Galatians as foolish. And he's not trying to be mean in saying that, but he is making the point that thinking that we can contribute to our right standing with God in any way is the most foolish thing in all the world to believe. Paul is so surprised that they are turning away from this message of trusting in only Jesus that he asks them if they are under a spell or if they are bewitched. 
Paul reminds them what had happened when they became Christians. Through Paul's clear preaching of the gospel, he publicly portrayed Jesus Christ crucified. As the Galatians heard Paul preaching that message, they responded with faith, which means that they believed that it could only be possible for them to stand before God in the right or not guilty by trusting in Jesus and what he had done for them alone. And it was in that moment of hearing with faith that God himself, by his spirit, came into the lives of the Galatians. So Paul argues, if God's spirit is received through faith in Jesus, then how could we ever think that we must also add works in order to complete our salvation? God has already come to dwell with us by his spirit. So faith is how we start the Christian life, and faith is how we continue the Christian life as well. Moving into verses 6 to 9, we see that the second reason that faith is so important is that we become sons of Abraham and receive his blessing by faith. The way that Paul argues in this section is by taking us back into the Old Testament. We go all the way back to Genesis 15. There God promises Abraham that even though he and his wife are very old, they will still have a child and that their descendants will be as numerous as the stars in the heavens. When God made this promise, Abraham believed God, even though it seemed very unlikely, and God credited righteousness to him. That means that he saw him as righteous and holy in his sight. But God didn't just credit righteousness to his account. He also made staggering promises to him. And in fact, these promises were so profound that for the rest of history, if you weren't part of the family of Abraham, you have no access to the blessings of God. And here we come to one of the central elements in the debate in Galatia. They thought that the only way to become a member of the family of Abraham was to believe in Jesus and be circumcised. But Paul shows us that it isn't faith plus circumcision that makes you part of his family. It's faith alone. God showed us this was the case the very first time that he blessed Abraham. He said that he would become the father of many nations through faith. And if we believe in God's promises, like Abraham did, that we can be right before God because of Christ alone, then we will have access to these blessings that God provided to Abraham and to his family forever. Now, if these first two reasons aren't enough to see why faith alone is so important for the Christian life, Paul offers a final reason in verses 10 to 14 by showing that it is through faith alone and Christ alone that God's curse, which by nature is upon all people, is removed. In verses 10 to 12, Paul makes a clear distinction between the only two ways that people can be right before God and live in his presence by his spirit. The first way is by trying to use God's law trying to do the right religious things in order to be blessed by God and be in his good graces. But this, Paul soberingly says, puts people under God's curse. Well, how can that be so? Paul says it is because if we try to be right before God, if we try to find spiritual life by obeying God's law, then we have to obey the whole law all the time. This means that we have to live a life that is constantly pleasing to God, loving him supremely above all else, and perfectly loving every other person in our life, every single second of our life, without ever failing. But of course, says Paul, there is not a single human being in the history of the world, apart from Jesus Christ, who has ever, even for an hour, come close to this kind of standard. And this is why we thank God that there is another way that we can be right before him. And that, Paul says in verse 11, is by faith. Faith means that we look away from ourselves, We give up any hope or confidence that what we do or don't do can remove God's curse and earn God's favor or blessing. And we instead look to Christ crucified as the only one who could rescue us from the curse of the law and make us right before God. Paul closes this section in verses 13 to 14 by showing how we are freed from the curse we deserve. And it's because the sinless son of God, who lived a life that was entirely pleasing to God, received God's punishment so that sinners who live lives that are worthy of receiving eternal punishment can hear, well done, good and faithful servant. That's what happened at the cross. The Old Testament makes it very clear that all who are under God's curse are to be put on a tree as a sign of this punishment. And when Christ hung on the cross, he bore this curse that we deserve. And in doing that, he purchased us from the punishment of the law. So what we've seen in this passage is that salvation is the work of God from beginning to end. Thousands of years before you were even born, God preached the gospel in his promise to Abraham. And in Christ, he came to earth to bear your punishment. Now anyone can receive the blessing of Abraham and the promised Holy Spirit through faith in Christ alone. 
So Paul wants the Galatians and us today to understand what faith, according to the Bible, really is. Faith is all about what you rely upon or what you are confident in to make you right before God. If we think that we can do or not do something that would bring about God's blessing in our life, then we are trusting in our works and misusing God's law. And once we understand what real faith is, we can see also that Paul wants us to understand that the way we live our whole Christian life is the same way that we started our Christian life, through trusting not in ourselves, but only trusting in Christ alone. God's Spirit can work powerfully in our lives as we exercise our faith by looking to Jesus as our hope and confidence. And so in light of this passage, we can pray that God would lead us into a greater knowledge of himself, that we would be wise and not foolishly turn away from the gospel. Pray also that God would help you to understand the Old Testament well enough that you're genuinely excited you're part of the family of Abraham. And finally, thank God for removing the curse of the law by sending Christ to become a curse for us on the cross.